the Gashi oh Kashi Lord. game is the president's best skill debate in a show about candy. Yep, candy. I'm watching shows about the sweet, sweet taste Yo, of candy. Yo, no oh, wonder. Candy. Oh my Lord. Delicious cream pie. I love a cream pie. Sign me up. You nasty. Hey, we made this far and you haven't already dropped a sub on channel, drop a like, full reaction, full discussion, that's going to be here. Also on Patreon, link in the description. Giga reactions coming up next. Talk about saying that's Cassidy Man behind the cam director here with another Giga reaction anime in 2016 part one. Um, this one specifically says winter spring. So I'm just going to go out on limb and say that he was late again. He was late, bro. He was late again. Because when I hear winter spring, that means, yo, January through March went, right? And then March through maybe June went by, and now you're dropping the video. At the same time, I don't know when his attention or when he normally dropped these. I'm just know that the meme is he's always late. I'm assuming he's late on this shit too. Um, looking back at the last couple years, it, it was some interesting seasons. Uh, the last season, uh, being quite, uh, what's the one like horny? It was very, very horny, but it was also hilarious. Uh, one of the better seasons, especially after that end of 2014 or beginning of 2015 season. No, no, it was the end of 2014. It was 2014 part two. It was slow. And in 2015 was another good year for anime. I'm looking to see if they're going to carry that same energy. You know what they say? Keep that same energy in the 2016. Um, again, I really picked anime back up, I think, in... 2018 or 2019 so i'm looking forward to getting up to those videos to seeing like yo when i started watching again it's like oh yeah 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 i mean like started watching for reactions i should make that clear i started re-watching anime like in 2013 2014 but we started reacting to anime on your boy rock lee's channel that was like 2018 2019 so that's where i'm like that's when i got like intense in the anime i catch i was a casual watcher bro very casual when i say casual a lot of anime i watch in passing a lot of it was honestly in dub as i was just doing other things like school or working so it was really one of those things where i was like did i watch the anime sure but i did i watch the anime not really i didn't absorb it appreciate it give it that je de vie that's the wrong word but i'm gonna leave it in there whatever uh but yeah enough of my blabber i'm gonna jump into this so if you made this far and you haven't already drop that sub drop that like whole thing's gonna be here but go check out the patreon for uncut unreleased anime reactions i'll never see the light of day on youtube i got things over there like dress up darling i got jujitsu kaizen uh i got um love is war and that's just off the top of my head it's very diverse over there a bunch of different things you'll enjoy it you won't regret it oh both freeze up there too uh, Gigu Anime 2016 reaction is coming up next. Hey, just a quick thank you to all the subs on the channel. You members of the Nasty cast are the driving force that makes all this possible. Catch Director Nasty on Reddit, Patreon, and all other socials in the description below with links. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again. So once again, the end of the year is upon us, and it's time we can finally reflect back on all the anime we got to see. But before that, how about we look at all the great things that happened in the past year? <laughs> Remember back in the day when memes were just stupid macro images about cats that were passed around the office to be laughed at? Well, yes. Well, those simple days are unfortunately Cute. long over, as 2016 marked the year that real life became a meme, and the whole world was laughing at itself. Do it! it things off with a mid-season twist by actually rage quitting out of Europe because they couldn't um. picking up all the tabs at the EU pub, giving solace to millions of Brits as they finally had a topic to talk to each other about other than the weather. But of course, those attention-seeking Americans not Oh no. Anyone, oh my god. Wrong of all time by electing the annoying orange as president, leaving Hillary supporters completely dumbfounded, regretting that she probably just didn't dab hard enough to achieve victory. Oh no. It was a year of shock with no exception to those we lost. We unfortunately had to say goodbye to such influential figures as David Bowie, Prince, Alan Rickman, Damn. Damn. Kerry Fisher and people using the word literally and cringe the way they were actually intended. So it should Jesus. come as no surprise that the biggest and most mourned over loss felt by anyone throughout the world was for that of a fucking gorilla. But hey, enough of yep. the world events. We're here to talk about anime and all the weird and wonderful moments that mattered to us. Of course, I can't cover everything, but this is everything that stood out to me. And with that, we rewind back to January and the start of the year as we start things off with the hot winter. The winter season. Hot new show to winter. This isn't the right show. No, that's 
Wait, what? Yes, the go-to anime that started everyone off this year was of course Erased, which had a stranglehold mm. on the entire community for a brief period. This murder I've heard Erased things. The story of a dude who has the innate ability of being sent back in time before major accidents occur in order to prevent them. After being wrongfully Ooh. accused of murdering his mum, he's sent back to his childhood where he tries to prevent a series of child murders and find out who the real culprit was all those years ago. In the arc. This is making a murderer but with time travel bullshit cause it's anime. This genuinely interesting concept Dumb. of the community gripped every week waiting for new developments, even if there were some small things off with the writing. Several of the kids acted and talked like mature adults instead of being like, you know, annoying as fuck kids. <laughs> some genuinely awkward moments of a mentally 29 year old guy having romantic tensions with an 11 year old kid. <laughs> oh. It's probably not pedophilia because it's cute, right? But it could sometimes be overlooked when you remember the dark themes of the show and the events that the kids had to endure. Jeez. Nah. No way. No. The culprit reveal ended up being more predictable than an average fucking episode of Scooby Doo, which led to a rather weak and cheesy ending compared to the great build-up we were riding on for the majority of the series. Tough. I don't know why I'm the only one who apparently has a problem with this opening for sounding more like a bloody Naruto opening than one for a time travel murder mystery thriller. Yeah, Naruto opening. I'm screaming. But come on, this opening sounds nothing like the general tone of the series. Elsewhere in the season, the Gashi Gashi gave us our resident best girl debate in a show about candy. Yep. Candy. I mean, who doesn't oh. love watching shows about the sweet, sweet taste? Yo, candy? no oh, wonder. Candy. Oh my lord. Candy. Yo. Delicious cream pie. I love a cream pie. Sign me up. What? Gates continued for a second season showing the absolute might. Of Gates! The Yo, Gate was fire. Nothing, striking terror into the hearts of some medieval peasants armed with pitchforks. Because of this, it was discussed as being possible propaganda, with the Japanese government and SDF being painted in an overwhelmingly positive light. While other I did hear about that. Cartoonish level of villainy, such as the way they presented the American president as an egotistical, power hungry, blonde guy with no regard to public opinion. Hey, wait a minute. Parkour. Two on the nose. Anime and Prince of Stride Alternative. Really? It sounded like a really cool animated concept if you based it on all the sick videos found on YouTube. But the anime itself basically boiled down to a bunch of dudes running around trying to find the most convoluted way possible to high five each other at top speed. The mention double really plot twist sad in history by having a girl walked in on while taking a piss without losing her fucking mind. In a pretty average oh my God. sci fi show that didn't really do much to stand out except having the protagonist do a very out of character dance in the opening as if oh, word, B -boy? Like someone auditioning for some sick dance crew or something. Stop. Yo, not the god dancers. Yo, yo, the god dancing shit is the funniest. I love when they put random music behind it, bro. They put Mariah Carey's, uh, all I want for Christmas is you. Yo, just imagine that to this shit right here. Just imagine Mariah Carey to this shit. <laughs> whoa, oh, gave us a totally whoa. original premise by throwing an unwitting group of individuals into a fantasy world. Laughs in his okay. in reality, and everyone is weak as shit. Heavy emphasis was put on the most insignificant of that. Oh my god, that's creating a more serious addition to the concept. This year's latest attempt shows us that not all CG anime is bad came from Polygon Pictures Arjun, a show that got largely overlooked Ooh. because any anime CG equals bad anime CG, which is a shame because that's false. The visuals, this is one of the most compelling, slickly written thrillers to come out in recent years, complete with a villain who basically psychopaths Makashima if he were a stand user. Kyoto Animation stepped out of their comfort zone. So Wait, what? Phantom World. Showing us that when they are not dangling Yuri bait in front of us or Moe pandering, they are not above good old fashioned tasteless fan service. Oh Featuring my more God. accidental trips and panties, a girl who can oh. only deep throat a titan, and of course the classic. Yo, give me some of that. Party. Though the sleeper hits this season, definitely. Katasuba! This came out in 2016? God damn it! But that Fantasy world. By being a genuinely funny and charming take on the genre. There was several you, so let me get this straight, Gigu. Let me get this straight. You found Konosuba funny and interesting. Last season, you'll shit. You know what? You know what? You know what? 
<laughs> sometimes, sometimes you have to forgive people and their horrible takes. You know, I'm sure I've had one or two y'all had to forgive me for, but nothing quite like Colin Kona. That's why I have to rewatch Kona Suba because I watched the whole first season not realizing it was supposed to be a comedy. I was waiting for them to slay the Demon Lord and for the story to progress. So maybe it's me. Maybe I didn't appreciate it for what it was. But right now, you saying it's. Kona Suba, a show I'm going to I like Kazuma. Funny. Kazuma. Kazuma. Stupid, bro. Megumi really was the one who stole the show when this first came out? Just getting over their disappointment of the erased end. Surprising. Enough of stupid time travel gimmicks to draw us in, and we were looking for something new to latch on to. Or at least we thought we were. Re Zero, yeah. See, same girl gets rejected, and everyone loses their minds. 2016. Yes, this year, an anime yeah. undoubtedly belonged to Re Zero, the time leaping show that took over the community. Essentially, just thousands of people watching the longest, most emotionally draining Let's Play of Dark Souls in anime form. As Facts. Fans tuned in weekly to watch some poor sod get tortured physically and mentally, creating the entirely new genre, suffer porn. But out of all the oh, moments, no. the most talked about part had nothing to do with suffering, but was of course the I Love Amelia moment, Yo. unprecedented scenes of an entire community declaring a character undeniably worse girl for doing absolutely fucking nothing yo i was on it this wave of salt this community has seen since the dark orimo wars of 2013 in response to scenes of what is commonly known as a massive dick move but i've already covered re-zero extensively in my review and parody of it so instead of repeating myself let me take this time to talk about my actual favorite show of the season oh man and the time really? the way shown in battle series would get noticed would be by adding a darker twist to it or subverting the tropes in a clever way or by being JoJo's. It was nice to being see that just went back to its roots and doing it really fucking Really? What but season was this? It was nothing more than a celebration of the tropes you've seen many times before but refined to a T. Demonstrating to us that you don't always need to do something overly original or off the cuff if you just get the basics absolutely right. Deku's pure childlike desire to become a hero made him incredibly sympathetic to any person who's cheered for their heroes as a kid. Kid. And All Might was one of the most nah. characters I've seen in anime. Nah, listen, the reason I have this look on my face is because I'm just now realizing me and Gigook's taste in anime, I don't know if they quite line up. Because all the nice things he's saying about my hero right now, my hero is a good anime, right? It's good, right? But man, I feel like this nigga loves it. And I'm just like, you love my hero? You love Konosuba? It's like, mm, mm. Basics absolutely right. Deku's pure childlike desire to become a hero made him incredibly sympathetic to any person who's cheered for their heroes as a kid. And All Might was one of the Now All Might's that guy though. All Might's actually that guy. Charismatic mentor type in the way that you looked up to him, yet related to him at the same time. The charm of the series made it incredibly easy to get behind the characters and moments, no matter how cheesy or predictable they were. Okay, you admit that. At the best of times, so I highly recommend it for any shonen fans, or if you're just looking for something fun. Also, not to mention next season we're getting a tour. Tournament arc! Tournament arc! Tournament arc! Oh, this was early. Okay. This, you know what? To be fair, my hero at that time was still not bad. We never knew we had the bone of war in Hey Wit. I thought this was meant to be Attack on Titan Season 2, yeah? Studio Trigger gave us a show about a group of quirky individuals becoming friends and developing feelings for each other. Written by Mario So you know what that means. Low triangles, oh god. Of course, meant yet another group of friends falling for each other without getting their feelings returned. But looking past that, it asked the question of what would happen if humans could totally end Man, let me stop. in a way that I can't see being explored anywhere but in anime. It even had a character which was oh. Marco from Kill the Kill done right. And I also need to mention this great original opening that looks so trippy and cool, it makes you wonder what kind of a genius person could come up with imagery like this. <laughs> Whoa. Introduced in the first episode of Lost Village, a show about a 31. running away from their problems in order to meet the biggest problem anyone can face. 
being an awful show. It was so awful, in fact, there were actually discussions on whether it was being intentionally bad. My personal take is that it was a planned love child of Higurashi and Lord of the Flies, but along the way got drunk, tripped over, and thought it was meant to be a sitcom. Bakuon, what it was a beauty fan service show that tried to appeal to Ooh. the budget here too. Not saying they didn't succeed, but they just needed to introduce their characters the correct way. Like this. Some say he seen every episode of One Piece a hundred times over and can block a punch from oh one God. punch. All we know is he's called the Stig. The Stig. Big Order gave us an annual dose of Edge, giving us a completely what trashy was that? I somehow couldn't find myself hating. Imagine a death game starring Lelouch and his Yandere sidekick, but every enemy was a stand user with the most ridiculously OP ability you can think of, like a Geass or Immortality or Predicting the Future. It was like if Mirai Nikki, Akami Gakyo, Code Geass, and Jojo's Bizarre Adventure had a drunken code oh, orgy one night. Oh my god. You're not proud of the fact you watched it, but it was still kind of entertaining. Just what the hell? Two espionage drama, which sounds like a really cool original idea for anime and but realize how this would actually work in real life all right chaps i've just had intel that one of us is a spy working with the japanese i keep telling you it's not me that's exactly what a japanese spy would say she is a very suspicious i completely agree with you random asian person in europe who speaks broken english sakamoto descar showed us how to transcend the <laughs> terrible a whole new plane no human has ever reached before in swag the anime phoenix rights gave us a true to the game anime adaptation that was famous but ultimately had little to no reason for any newcomers to choose watching this over playing the games unless they didn't own a DS or a pair of hands. And uh, I didn't do year, either. Yet again Yo, part four. Part four. Hell yeah, bro. And I mean, it's JoJo's. What more can I say about it? Part four was good, well, though. I don't even know if liking JoJo's to death is something genuine or has become a meme in and of itself. The so, third best part JoJo's. ever. It's an anime that's good. It's really fucking good. You should watch JoJo's. JoJo's is love. JoJo's it is, is life. life. Oh, man. It was me, Dio! And that's it for part one this year. Join me next time when I talk about the CG that just keeps giving. And, of course, a bunch of gay people. What? Solid water. What? The, the... That was anime in 2016. To be honest with you, the only part... So, my JoJo ranking order is... 2... It's... What did I say? 2, 1, 5, 4, 6... Three. The only good thing that came out of part three was the dun, 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 the we'll be back or the uh, uh, next uh, next time. I love that shit. So yeah, it wasn't until this this video. I you yo Giku both said that he enjoyed and liked Konosuba and My Hero Academia, and I just kind of looked at my man funny. He said, it and I was like, bro, are you for real? Huh? Huh? Like I, I I don't I don't know I don't know what to say, man. But here's what I'll say, right? I am not overtly how do I say this? I told y'all I watched Konosuba the wrong way. I gotta watch it again to see if I enjoy it, because I didn't realize it was supposed to be a comedy. Package that over there. My hero, I would agree, my hero is a very, very, very good show, but I'm not I'm not recommending it to nobody, bro. When somebody asks me what to watch, I, my first like my top ten answer, my hero doesn't even come to mind, bro. It just doesn't for me. A lot of people are like, yo, you tripping my heroes, this and that. It's part of the new big three. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's just it's a good show. I will say, as far as I've gotten up to this point in my hero right now, anime only. I might recommend it, but at the same time, now nah, there's a lot of other stuff I'd rather see. Even in the own shonen category, I just don't think it's the best shonen. Yo, I put Haikyuu over my hero, and I know right now somebody's tripping. They just got on their keyboard, and you're about to just light me up. Yo, that's fine. We don't have to have the same taste. That's what I realized. I, I thought me and Gigook, we kind of were like kindred spirits. But, you know, the further we go, I realize the things that he enjoy and the things I enjoy, we divert at some areas and locations. We do divert, and it is what it is. What I like about the 2016 one, though, is it was the year of ReZero, where he said, Escape Amelia, and everybody, including me, yo, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even care for Rem that much. I really didn't care for Rem that much. That, let's be objective. Rem, me and Rem, I was like, ah, okay, whatever. The moment he said, I love Amelia, after all that she said, I couldn't believe it, bro. 
I became an Amelia hater for a little bit. I really did. And he's right. Amelia actually didn't do anything, bro. She did nothing wrong besides, like, just, like, beat a girl that this nigga was simping after. And I was irate. But you know what really changed my mind? Again, anime only. As we went through that last, that second season of ReZero, and it's like, and she went through her trials and whatnot, and I was like, you know what? You know what? I, 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 I see it. I fucks with her, bro. I fucks with her now. But at that time, I was like, get her out. Bag her up. Get her out of my face. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. But yeah, man, uh, anime in 2016 seemed like it was pretty good. Some of the shows definitely sound like a massive miss, like a massive miss. But a lot of other stuff, it was dope. It was a good season. It was a solid season. That one, there was one where like a, a mom just like came up and just, the daughter, I was like, yo, I was like, yo, they bopping kids now? Like, jeez. The only kids bop I'm trying to listen to is when they remix pop songs, but that's, that's, that's not here or there. We're just gonna leave that right where it is in 2016. And we're gonna end this video now in 2023. So if you made this far and you haven't already, drop a sub, drop a like, whole thing's gonna be here. Also on Patreon, only, one re only reason I want you to check out the Patreon because I know there's uncut, unreleased anime reactions that you will like and you will enjoy that will never see the light of day on YouTube because it is not made for YouTube. It's specifically for Patreon exclusive, them only. So you wanna see it, you gotta go up and join. Link in the description. I'm your man behind the cam. As always, yo, never forget, Stay nasty, y'all. Oh, right, I'm really fucking shaking, bro.